Hey book nerds, welcome to my channel. So today I'm doing my mid-month wrap up for July. It's been a bit of a weird reading month for me because up until the 13th of July I'd only read two books and it's about the 22nd at the time of filming this and I've read about 14 books now I think. So yeah it's a bit of a weird thing where I read nothing at the start of the month and I read loads midway through the month and part of that was because I went on holiday and I travelled a lot and when I'm on the train I read. Part of that was just, I don't know, I just didn't feel much like reading at the start of the month which never happens to me. Um, but for this wrap up I'm only going to talk about the first 10 books I read and then I'll leave the rest for the end of the month wrap up and hopefully it'll be about even. So uh, let's start with the books I read. So the first book was a real disappointment sadly and that was Growing Things by Paul Tremblay. I was sent an arc of this and I really thought I would love it. Um, I've only read one of the Paul Tremblay work before and that was Head for the Ghosts and I gave that four stars out of five I think. I really liked that book and I was really excited because this is like a short story collection. I thought oh it'd be really good to get more from this author whose writing style I know I like. I really didn't like this book. I gave it two stars out of five, which might be kind of generous. And I will link my blog review down below where you can see specifically the rankings of how many stories I liked versus how many I didn't like. Um, my main problem with this collection is that I feel like you have to be a huge, huge fan of Paul Tremblay to understand any of the stories. Not any of the stories. It feels like most of them have references in that I didn't get and that would be fine if it didn't feel like those references were crucial to the story. My main problem with being self-referential is you have to be able to ignore it. Like Stephen King does it really well, there's loads of stuff in his books where if you've read other works by him you'll be like oh that means that thing but if you haven't read that you can still understand the story and it doesn't make a difference. Whereas I felt with this collection so many of the stories were reliant on the fact that you had read these other works and because I hadn't it didn't make it very accessible. Um, also a lot of the stories were just boring, I wasn't really engaged in most of them. Um, there is one in particular which is entirely meta and I've read the work that it was referring to. It's got a reference to Head Full of Ghosts and I still didn't understand the reference until I read other people's reviews of it and I realised what it was talking about. So I just, I don't think it was a very well put together collection and I'm really sad because I thought I would love it and I just didn't. Thankfully I really enjoyed the next book I read and that is Noteworthy by Riley Redgate. This is a contemporary book about a girl who um, goes to a performing arts school and she is not picked for the musical for like the third year in a row so she decides to dress up in drag and join a male a cappella group. So she has a chance to win this prize and basically make it in the performing arts world. It's a bit of a ridiculous setup. <laughs> I did not expect to love this book as much as I did. This is incredibly well written. And what I really liked is that it's actually really diverse. Um, so the main character isn't straight and there's another character who isn't straight. And it does a lot of exploration of the kind of unfortunate implications of dressing up in drag. Um, so there's a bit early on where the main character is looking up ways to kind of make herself look more male and then she realises that she's using a resource that's intended for trans people and then she feels really bad about that because she feels like she's exploiting a resource that people need for their lives to do something that's just kind of fun for her, or not fun but you know isn't necessary as such um, and everything that revolves around her lying to people is explored really well. This was about a three star until the end and then the end just made me feel so good and it was just like such a nice contemporary ending that it bumped it right up but yeah I don't normally read a lot of contemporaries but I could definitely recommend Noteworthy um, for a really good like summer read. The next book I read was, it was alright, it was A Little Girl Sleeping by Jennifer Chase. This is another arc 
Um, this I gave a 3.5 stars to. I will list the release dates of all of these arcs down below because I never remember them for videos, it's really bad. Um, and I'll also link the blog posts for all of them because every arc that I review will have a corresponding blog post where I go into more detail. But this is a police procedural about a um, woman who's been in the army and she comes back and her uncle is a detective and she starts investigating a cold case in, from her uncle's department and she basically makes a huge leap in this case and finds that there are these bodies of girls preserved in glass coffins, um, girls who are thought to have gone missing and that's like the setup for it. It was pretty enjoyable. I think if you enjoy police procedurals, you'll give it a lot higher rating than I did. I'm not the biggest fan of police procedurals, but I do pick them up if they've got an interesting premise. And this felt like a really solid one. It's got a couple of stereotypes in terms of characters. There's like the angry head of department who doesn't trust the cocky newcomer and tries to hinder her every step. And then she's got this partner who's kind of naive but learns to trust her and there's a couple of things like that going on but the story itself was really solid i really actually liked the detective character she was really interesting and she was really likable and i would be persuaded to pick up more in the series if i felt like there were ones with a perhaps a stronger plot um or more plot driven than this one but it was definitely a nice strong start next we have another arc and this is the shapes of midnight this is by Joseph Payne Brennan um, and this is a short story horror collection. It's incredibly short. I will say I got an arc of this. This is one of the arc books um, and my edition was missing two stories and I think one of the stories that's missing is meant to be a novella so that might be why it was ridiculously short for me but it was incredibly short. It was like a hundred and something pages on the low end of hundred pages. Um, but I did give this four stars. It started off not poorly, but it started off very mediocre. The first two stories I was kind of like, uh, this is kind of standard horror, it's not really doing anything. But then it went up extremely quickly in quality. And it does dip down a little bit again at the end. It's like a perfect bell curve. Um, but the middle stories are so good and one of these stories actually genuinely really scared me. And I don't get scared by horror. I read a lot of horror and it usually never scares me, but one of these did genuinely scare me. Um, and I can't speak for the whole collection because I wasn't given the whole collection, but this was a really solid set of stories. I don't know how much the price is or how long the final book is. It might be not worth it if it's quite expensive because it, did, it was so short, but then again, the novella could add a nice chunky bit of length to it. But yeah, this was definitely worth checking out and I'm glad I requested it. The next book I listened to, it was an audiobook, and it was Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. I am rereading these with the Time Turner Book Club, I'll link their Twitter down below. Um, last month it was Philosopher's Stone, and in the first two weeks of July it's Chamber of Secrets, last two weeks it's Prisoner of Azkaban, and then every book after that you have the whole month to read it. I'm really enjoying these rereads. Um, I'm not going to rate this and I'm not going to talk about it loads because it's Harry Potter, but this was my favourite one when I was younger. and. It was really nice listening to it as an audiobook because I've not done that before. Stephen Fry does the perfect Gilderoy Lockhart voice. It's just the right level of smarmy. And I binged this almost entirely in one day because I got a little behind on my schedule. So that was an experience in itself. But yeah, obviously I love it. It's Harry Potter. The next book I read was another good one and that was Saw Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. I gave this 4.5 out of 5 stars and um, this is a horror book and it's told from the perspective of three different girls. One is a girl and hang on let me backtrack a bit so it takes place on this island called Sawkill and on this island girls go missing at a higher rate than they normally do and one of our characters is a rich girl who is responsible for helping this entity and this entity is the one that has been taking the girls. The other character is the daughter of a police officer and she was used to be best friends with one of the girls who went missing and she's convinced that something's not right about these girls going missing and she basically is investigating it. And then the third character is new to the town and she arrives with her sister and very early on her sister gets taken by this monster 
so she gets sucked into the world of this book. So those are our three main characters. This was such a good book, it was so compelling. I read it in pretty much one sitting on the train and it was such an emotional experience, I was like a wreck afterwards. It's beautifully written, the writing style might annoy some people, it's a little bit on the poetic side but it didn't annoy me and it, that kind of writing usually does. Um, the characters were really strong, I was worried at first that they were all going to blend together but they all ended up be having really individual voices um, and they were all really interesting people, none of them was particularly a very nice person or a very nasty person, they all just felt very real and very solid. Um, it's got some great rep in here, it has an asexual character, it has a bisexual character. Um, I think, I'm not too sure on the other identities because they're not always explicit in terms of labels stuck on them, but there is a female-female relationship in this and yeah, it was just really good read. Um, I can't say too much about it without giving stuff away. It's a solid horror book, uh, the ending gets a little bit muddled me but that might have been just because I was reading it in one sitting that I got quite tired and I lost focus a bit but I would definitely recommend it it's left a huge impact on me and it was much better than I thought it'd be I wasn't expecting to enjoy it so much speaking of books that I absolutely loved the next one is Sadie by Courtney Summers and this is a five star read for me a very rare five star read I knew I would love this Courtney Summers has been one of my favorite authors for a long time um Sadie is her most popular book, it's the one that kind of got her noticed by loads of people. And this is about a girl called Sadie and her younger sister was murdered. And it's told in alternative perspectives, so you start with Sadie and she's on this journey to track down her sister's killer. And then the other perspective is this podcast who's trying to find out what happened to Sadie because Sadie's gone missing. And the podcast is always one step behind Sadie. So you find out what happened to her and then the podcast is kind of entering the same zone that she was just in. Um, yeah, I loved this book. It was brilliant. Again, I read it in pretty much one sitting. It was an emotional wreck. I shouldn't have read it right after Soul Kill Girls. I was just ruined by both of these books. But ugh, I love Sadie so much. Um, I will say, because I think it's important for Courtney Summer's books, her books have open endings. And I've heard loads and loads of people complain about Sadie and the ending of Sadie. And I want you to know, like, I don't think it's a spoiler particularly. There is elements of this ending that are open. But <laughs> what was funny for me was that this is actually one of the least open endings for a Courtney Summers book. Like when I finished it, I was like, oh, no, I was, it's way, I get way more answers than I thought you would get. But yeah, so this book has gotten a lot of hype and it's got a lot of backlash from the hype. It is a five star read for me, um, but I knew it would be. And I guess just don't expect too much and don't expect it to be a really great thriller because it's much more of a contemporary story than a thriller and I think that's important to know as well. So after both of those soul crushing books, I wanted to read some nice fluffy contemporaries because I was on holiday by this point and it was getting a bit much. So the next one I picked up was The Summer of Us by Cecilia Vanessa. This is a book about four people who have finished high school and they're all about to go off to college and they go on this holiday together and the people are, there's two females who are best friends and one of them's moving off to Australia and the other one isn't and their friendship is one of the main focuses. One of the girls is dating this guy and they're both going to go off to the same area of college um, and then the other the other person is a guy who has recently kissed the girl who is in a relationship. Oh sorry there's five people actually, there's another girl as well who um, one of the two kind of main characters, the two females, has got a crush on, there is a female female thing in this. This was really nice. I gave this I think three stars? 3.5 stars I gave this one. Um, it's basically a very nice contemporary story. It has got elements of cheating in which I didn't like and it hasn't got the best portrayal of friendships in the world but it was a really nice read. It was really quick and it's a 
great holiday book because it's about these five people just hopping across five different cities and you get quite a lot of the atmosphere and there's some nice stuff going on there so it was good to read on holiday. Is it mind-blowing? No, but it's a decent enough contemporary and if the premise interests you I'd recommend trying it out. I still wasn't quite ready to go back to like the hard-hitting thriller horror books so I did read one more contemporary, I say one more, I've read more this month, but one more contemporary before I went back to horror and that is I Hate Everyone But You. This is by Gabby Dunn and Alison Raskin um, and <laughs> this is a really interesting book so I gave this three stars I think in the end, maybe 3.5. I've written down three so I'll say three. This is a book told entirely through emails and text and it's written by two authors and I assume one of them took each of the two characters and it's basically about these two girls who've just gone off to separate colleges and they're best friends and they're just emailing each other. This is not a plot heavy book, this is a character heavy book and it's gotten pretty bad reviews on Goodreads but I really enjoyed it because I for one, this book was really funny. I don't normally laugh at books, but I found myself like genuinely laughing out loud in public at this book where I was on the train with my partner and I had to keep like covering my mouth so I wasn't laughing at nothing because people would think that was weird. Um, I found this book really funny and I found the characters, one of them I wasn't really likeable, but I found them both interesting. So the two characters are um, there is, oh, what's her name? Ava, who is a uptight, kind of naive girl. She's said to have OCD. To me she reads more like someone with autism, um, but obviously the author wrote her to have OCD so I'm not gonna dispute that. But she reads kind of like that, um, and she's very naive and she's kind of going off to college and throwing herself into all these experiences and trying to deal with not having her best friend with her who is Jen and Jen is a very outgoing very outspoken ultra feminist ultra liberal um queer kind of person and their friendship's really interesting and I like how it develops I wasn't a fan of how this book ended but there is a sequel which I will be picking up so I'm intrigued to see what happens with that but by the end of the book I kind of disliked Jen quite a lot and I understand what the authors were trying to do with her and I did think she was sympathetic but maybe because I was reading Ava as having autism as well or it just felt I don't know it felt like Jen was really really harsh to her best friend and she never really got held culpable for it um but yeah it was a really good contemporary again if you like the premise i'd pick it up be aware that there is almost no plot yeah so i'm gonna stop my wrap up there because i'm not quite hit 10 books but i can see how long i've been talking for and it's a long time so i'm just gonna leave it there um so far it's been an interesting month i've had really bad reviews mostly around arcs forgot to talk about one that's why it's not 10 books hang on so I completely forgot about this. <laughs> the Doctor by Lisa Stone. I didn't actually finish this book, I DNF'd it. I read the first 12 chapters and the last 5 chapters and that was enough. Um, didn't write a proper review for this, it, it wasn't art, so there isn't a blog post to go with it. But I have got a review on Goodreads and it's essentially going to be what I say now. I did not enjoy this book at all. It starts as a thriller and it's supposed to be about a woman who lives next door to a doctor and she suspects that he's doing something sinister and that's what the blurb says. What the book is actually about is you know he's definitely doing something sinister because you get chapters mostly focused from his point of view where he talks about all the sinister things that he's doing in a very cartoon villain way. So he's over the top and he's like, you know, he's the kind of person who sees a woman and instantly, on like a woman on the street, and in his brain he goes off on this anti-feminist rant about her. And like, if he saw a dog on the street, he'd kick the dog. And he's just so over the top, it was really hard to read about. Um, so after 12 chapters, I felt I knew where this book was going, so I skipped the last five chapters. And I can tell you now, nothing happened in between that I could not have guessed would happen or 
indeed that had any impact on the plot because they only mentioned one thing that actually happened the entire time. So yeah, I did not enjoy this book. I did myself a favour and DNF'd it and I'm glad I did because it, it wasn't worth it. So yeah, so anyway, those are all the books that I'm going to talk about so far that I've read this month. Um, watch my end of month wrap up if you want the rest of the books that I've read so far. It has been a weird month. I've had bad luck with arcs, um, which is what I started to say before I remembered that one arc I hadn't talked about yet. But I think I read four arcs and only one of them I liked, which isn't great. Um, but I read some nice contemporaries, which never happens. And hopefully, I think on the whole, I've had some really high style reads, like four, 4.5, five star, which never happens. So we shall see at the end of the month what my stats are for it. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that July is going well for you reading wise and I hope you're having better luck with some books than I am. Um, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. It helps me out massively and I hope to see you next time.